All right, all right, all right. Welcome to Geopolitics in Conflict Q&A sessions. Hope you had a, a happy new year. So how was your, your new year, Ross? Actually, this year started off wonderfully. You know, all the exciting things coming up on our show, the programs, the training programs, the multiple topics. The courses. The courses. Uh, this, this looks like the most exciting year I could have ever imagined. Indeed, indeed. Well, I hope it is for you guys as well. So, as I said, welcome to Geopolitics in Conflict Q&A. But first, as always, guys, we want to thank you for your continued support. Also, make sure to check us out now on Locals. We are on Locals, uh, geopolitics.locals.com. Uh, uh, also, check out our membership at geopoliticsinconflict.com. So we have some presentations working on right now, right? Oh, big the time. For the Sa Saudis and China's missile technology. <laughs> that would be interesting. So uh, also check us, uh, follow me on Twitter at the Waralu and Elizabeth at Alchemy of E. Uh, I just posted this morning some very interesting information coming out of UK. <laughs> Whoever thought so. Yeah. Anyway. Without further ado, let's get on onto the questions because that's the whole reason why we are here. And uh, and by the way, guys, before I forget, uh, tomorrow make sure you check out uh, the the release of our video. That's the interview we conducted with Greg Foss. It is of great powerful. insight. Yeah, powerful. Oh, I admire the guy. Yeah. he is he is like us, straight shooter. You know, I admire people like that. So. So make sure you check it out tomorrow, guys. It will be released at 10 o'clock. So, all right, let's get on on this here and we'll move on with the questions. Zane Mir. Zane Mir. With the U.S. having stated that Taiwan is an unsinkable aircraft carrier, do you foresee a limited conflict for China and the U.S. as both sides are not backing down in their claims? No, no. Uh, as to the military aspects of it, uh, it's not going to happen because you're talking about going outside the box of a con confined or contained conflict. Yeah. Because this one's going to go outside the borders of, of that part of the world. And I, both countries, Russia, uh, China and the U.S., you know, what you hear is nothing but a rhetoric about, you know, we're going to defend Taiwan. As well, we signed the treaty. <laughs> we can only support Taiwan as far as providing weapons. That's about it. And, you know, as as we've talked about in other shows, yeah. the Pentagon gave some scenarios as to fighting with China in the South China Sea. Every time the United States lost. Exactly. There were 18 scenarios. 18 scenarios. 18, 18 losses. Yeah. We lost every darn aircraft carrier yeah. <laughs> that was in the area. So, and just to clear this up once for good, uh, I usually write, I write sometimes, they use the term invasion. You know, yeah. when we hear about where China invasion of, we use the term. Why do we use the term? It's not a re invasion, it's reunification. But what you guys need to understand is that Western audience, they don't have an understanding of China's history. So they can only associate things with the terms that they can understand. Yeah. That's like, for example, just to give you a quick example, when we talk about the rise of China. But well, <laughs> it's not the rise of China. It's the rejuvenation of China because history speaks to that. But Western audience will not understand if we use the term, for example, reunification. If we use the term rejuvenation, they're not going to understand that. They understand the terms that they can associate with because they don't know the history. Exactly. Yeah. All right, next question. Po Yin So. Now that the U.S. officials requested China for visas to attend the Winter Olympic, pardon me. <laughs> I know, it's laughable. <laughs> now that the U.S. officials requested China for visas to attend the Winter Olympic Games, will the 4I feel left out or will they feel betrayed by their undependent, undependable leader? That well, first of all, the the China never invited the. Uh, it's odd. It's very odd on our part, on part of the Americans, to all of a sudden come to China and said, "Yeah, can you grant us a visa to attend?" Well, you you were bad mouthing China for all this stuff about the Olympics. All of a sudden, you want to attend. You know, I I don't know what the Chinese government is going to decide on. Because the athletes were still going to go. It's it just not the diplomatic representation. 
Could it be that the U.S. realized that it was wrong to do that? You take a look at this kind of foreign policy and what you see is a real split with reality. And that what that's called is schizophrenia. I mean, you can't have a country that has this this wide a gap mm -hmm. between what they're stating and then what they're doing. Indeed. Indeed. So it would be very... Uh, I was surprised when I heard that. I read about it in, from different multiple sources. Uh, and I even sort of checked on... Uh, some people in dc about you know what is the state department thinking here yeah you know what what, what for you already uh, sort of insulted <laughs> the country so what's what's after that so so it would be just a window dressing basically it, it won't amount to anything angelo guiliano curious to know your opinion on what is happening oh kazakhstan well, funny you said that because we're going to do a break-ins on it right away. Yeah, what's going on in Kazakhstan briefly, just because I'm going to have to go into more detail about that. It has to do with uh, uh, prices of liquefied natural gas. It went up 100%. Wow. You know, people won't have it, you know, which to me, because to them, it is about 28 cents or so, which is a lot of money. You know, that's a, uh, what I found very interesting about that, Ross, is that people spoke. They took it to the street right away. And the government backed down 100%. Now the government is reversing everything back 100%. Wow. So what can the West learn from that? It is Kazakh, Kazakhstan. You know, just a, I had a chance to go there I, and back when I used to travel, uh, when I was working in Washington. So anytime I would go either to uh, uh, Afghanistan or in the neighboring countries, uh, we make stop in Kazakhstan, so it, it, it's rich in in the natural gas, in oil and all that. Well, one of the things this is saying is that people really do have power. Yeah. Do you remember when Mexico they raised the government raised the price of flour by two cents a pound, mm -hmm. and the people took to the streets? Indeed. So. And they reversed it. Yeah. And now things have changed. So I hope the West can learn something from it. But just make sure you watch the uh, break-ins. We're gonna do this afternoon. I'm going to do it on locals, not on YouTube. It's because there are some sensitive info, shall we say? I'm going to disclose. So, thank you for the question. Hey, look who it is. Oh, my gosh. Very Good to <laughs> see you, very Hey, very Lately, the U.S. has been so, so busy in Africa with so many attempts on <laughs> <laughs> So many attempts. I like that. On dirty regime change at so many countries and intensifying it looks like everything is in rush what is going on well i think it's pretty clear what's going on don't you indeed indeed yes the u.s been busy but guess what to no avail because mm -hmm. africans are realizing you know we can't trust the americans that's that's the word i got personally second thing has to do with the presence of china and russia yeah so and they're offering help, no strings attached. Yeah, economic help, that is. Right. So, so Africans are realizing, yeah, what the Americans are saying to us is nothing but a lip service. So that's why they are not trusting. what they, So the American presence will keep going. But it's not going to yield anything because countries already made a decision. Some countries, like Nigeria, for example, they already made a decision to move forward with China regarding economic projects. And you think all these places in the world, they have to they have to have seen what went on in Afghanistan. Oh, that's, they have to yeah. also see that the Chinese are giving more and more and more aid in terms of food, clothing, Medicare, health care and no strings attached again, just gifts. Exactly. And they also know the Belt and Road Initiative. We're probably going to do a program on Belt and Road on Initiative Africa, on Africa yeah, yeah. sometime soon. Yeah. Africa has a lot of resources. You know, it, it saddens me to realize uh, over the years, this is not just last year, whatever. Over the decades, you know, the richness of Africa, yeah, the, the the amount of resources they have, but they have been always put down by by Western powers. They will not let Africa rise. So, but also there are corruptions in Africa. No, oh. so let's face it. Unlike the rest of the world, of exactly. Course. Yeah. Okay. There it is, Ariel. Ariel, good to see you. Do you think that missions like the uh, James Webb, that's the telescope, mm -hmm. are more about geopolitical reasons and internationalism than rather than science? 
The timing of China Rising Space Program is not a coincidence. Happy 2020. You too, Ariel. Happy 2020 to you too as well. That's a loaded question. That's well, what we see is the James Webb, I yeah. guess you call it a telescope, Yeah, is perhaps the most sophisticated scientific thing that the United States has ever done. That thing is remarkable. Two hundred and I think 225 moving parts that have to all be put in place. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's been decades in the planning and the delivery. Do you think it has a political event? Uh, a to a degree, it has the well because, as we always say, who controls space controls the outcome of the battlefield. Oh, Remember that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, that's one. That's... Second thing, it has to do with far dimensions that goes beyond the scope of geopolitics. Maybe it has to do with other ex other life forms that exist in the universe, and and there are plenty out there. It just things don't get disclosed and uh, so yes it has to do with more than uh, it's because the simple simple thing you can think of about this one has to do with our capability of handling something that is completely different from us in all aspects and human nature <clears throat> is not equipped to handle this kind of stuff i guess that's why nasa has yeah. been hiring the theologians uh, exactly, and we're gonna talk about this one in in one of the break-ins soon. So we don't want to say too much about right. that one. So just stay tuned for that one, Ariel, because we're gonna do a break-in about this particular aspect. Elizabeth, what do you think of India backing Myanmar insurgents against the military and then seeking back over the border? Do you mean what do you think of the U.S. supporting India in backing Myanmar? <laughs> <laughs> there is always a third party behind the scenes that's doing that. So, yeah, we all know about Myanmar, how things are. And because all the demonstrations that took place and all that stuff that's been uh, stirred by the West, shall we say, you know, India, uh, uh, here is, here is the, the thing that you guys need to understand. India to the West is the bridge to get things moving because they are dispensable. Mm. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll say the truth. This is, you know, I used to work in Washington, DC. So we kind of had a first-hand understanding of how to assess the usefulness of a country. So India to the West is dispensable. Use the Indians, always, that's how. It's sad, but it's a reality. So this is why, this is why I believe when Vladimir Putin visited uh, India, basically, you know, yeah, one, uh, you know, the U.S. didn't like that because India, if India goes into the other direction, that's bad news for the U.S. Why? Because U.S. always depends on using India, so it's nothing but just a tool to use yeah. dispensable. I hate to say it, but it is the truth. Oh, Boone! Here's hey. Boone. What kind of reactions would the five nuclear powers statement have on the Ukraine and Taiwan conflicts? Happy New Year to you, too. Happy Bon. Happy New Year to you, too. Bon. By the way, uh, just to share with all our uh, viewers, Boone just got one of my Saudi book. Oh. So I look forward to signing it for him personally. And who's to say? We'll have that that beer we talked about, you know what I said. Um, even though I don't drink beer. But <laughs> I, I'll make an exception. Who knows? Uh, so yeah, it is it is quite a, an understanding uh, sort of uh, the where this is could go regarding the issue of Taiwan. You know how the five powers is gonna see. Well, the five powers are realizing that things are changing, you know, dramatically, whether they like it or not, and they can control the outcome of it. Yeah. This is why you see in what you're seeing. Uh, uh, soon we're going to be doing a break-in about just the recent statements from the high-ranking officers in the UK saying that, oh, we can face Russia. Really? Cut me up. You know, you know, but statements like this are an indication of how lost the West is when facing this geopolitical shift that they can contain, they can control. It has been always a, a conversation inside Wash, uh, the Beltway in Washington. You know what the conversation is? Is how can we, for example, contain China? You won't be able to. 1.4 billion, yeah. huge economy. Yeah. Cut me up. Yeah, it, things have changed in comparison to what the Soviet Union 
was back then at the beginning of the early 50s and 60s. Containment policy was feasible. Containment policy today against China will not work because the economic conditions have changed, okay? Because the world is more polarized. And third, because China is not what Soviet Union was back then. Right. You know, China, ha China has an advantage, and the advantage is the economic aspect. That does not mean China does not have economic problems because they do. They do. And there are some problems that coming up to the surface. And we're going to be addressing those uh, problems to put them out on the table for discussion because they need to be addressed. By the way, Vladimir Putin's Christmas message to the world peace, love, and acceptance. He, we got any number of responses. He got any number of responses about how well people liked his Christmas message. Go on. And they want to make war on this guy? Yeah. So so this is why major powers, despite what you hear, Boone, it's just nothing but a bravado. No more, no less. Hey, man. Is it true China and Russia have diverging interests in Central Asia? Uh, to a degree, to a degree, but they both converge on one key aspect. And you know what the one key aspect is? To keep the U.S. out. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I intend to address this one when I talk about Kazakhstan. So stay tuned for that one. Yes, uh, China also has to think in terms of the Belt and Road Initiative going through that area. But Russia also has to think in terms of you don't want any U.S. presence in this vicinity here so so they do have some interests that can overlap each other but the one that they both converge on or agree upon is they don't want u.s presence in central asia period. you know based on the relationship that vladimir putin has with xi jinping mm -hmm. they seem to resolve tough issues rapidly ones that once that are ones that are decades <laughs> old they're they're gone and that's part of the great communication yeah. yeah. So, community, I, you will know more than anyone else how important that is, as far as you know. How do we communicate with the rest of the world? Right. We have a double standard. We say one thing and do another. You know. Well, how do you expect the world to react to that? You know. The way they are reacting. Yeah. You know, if you can communicate with me straightforward, and and all I realize is that you are playing double standard here and there, why should I trust you? You know. Well, the the hypocrisy tour of Asia is a good example of that. Perfect. That was exactly. They sent they sent the United States home. Yeah. We don't want to talk to you. You got I, nothing to say that we want to hear. And exactly because that culture counts a lot on trust. Trust trust means a lot to them as it should in every society. Yeah. So so that's part of where where the issue is. Help me out with the name. Oh, Fad I mean, uh, Fahad. I got yeah. Yeah. Fahad Mimon. Okay. Was Nord Stream 2 pipeline Merkel's biggest policy failure? The pipeline is going to solve Europe's energy crisis and reduce Germany's reliance on coal plants. It provides strategic benefit to Putin. Mm, yeah. Well, first of all, let me clear one thing. Uh, uh, Merkel was not what the rest of the world saw. <laughs> yeah, let me, right. let, let me put that in perspective. What... Merkel on the stage is different than Merkel behind the scenes, what she was doing. You know, the, the, there, are, there are two main issues that I was aware of based on some sources from the region, from there, that they mentioned how Merkel was playing both sides. Like, for example, you take the issue of the immigration. Yeah. You know, with the Afghan and all that stuff. So when they came in, you know, turned around, get the money from the EU, and turn around and put those migrants on a plane and send them back. <laughs> oh. yeah, yeah, that's one. Second thing, despite what you hear about human rights and all that stuff, Merkel agreed to sell about $9 billion of weapons to Egypt. We all know the human rights abuses of Egypt. You know, So where is this? Uh, you know, Merkel is, uh, but regarding the Nord Stream 2, yeah, she does have a good relationship with Putin. That, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, based on what I know, is that when Putin meets with Merkel, they speak German. Yeah, he's yeah. absolutely fluent in yeah. German. Uh, but, but it's not only about the language, Ross. Is it tells you how much trust they have together. 
and this is why even as of yesterday the germany yesterday i was by the way invited to do an interview with sputnik uh, in washington dc and one of the topics that came up was the upcoming meeting of the chancellor uh, olaf scholz of germany yeah. with vladimir putin what's that why is that important it's because germany is going alone they didn't ask the us <laughs> That tells you right there. Preview of coming attractions. Exactly. For what 2022 is going to go. Right. Yeah. So that's where that division. Remember when we talked about Euro European Union is start to think in terms of its own foreign policy? This is the indication for it. So the pipe two. Yeah. Germany gets, pi uh, gets uh, 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 natural gas from Germany at a cheap price. But the U.S. is pressuring Germany to sell the gas from the U.S. At, at a higher, higher price. price. So you can just see what they're going to do. And, and, and rightly so. Plato. Oh, thank you, thank Plato. You, thank you, Plato. We appreciate it. Yeah, Plato always give us that. Super How many American diplomats are going to the Beijing in 2022? I think the number was 40. The diplomats? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not aware of that number. The number I am not aware, but... You know, it's kind of weird that the US the fact they're going. Yeah. Well, we think they're going. We think we... because we don't know if China grant them the visas or not. Right. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't know that the answer to that question. I don't have the exact number. We'd be happy to find that out and we can report on it on Friday when we do our live stream. <clears throat> YT. Tesla just opened a store in, in Xinjiang. Would there be a call to boycott Tesla? Probably. No. It's just yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, it won't I mean, all this propaganda, false propaganda about the Uyghurs and so on, it's been debunked so many times, yeah. and yet it just keeps flaring up again as if it's real. Yeah. And Elon Musk is moving forward with his operations in China. You know, it's kind of this is what you hear versus what it is. Like Ross always said, what's be behind? What's the news behind the news? The news behind He's it. moving forward. Exactly. So corporations here in the U.S. You know, despite what you hear about China, corporations in the U.S are doing business with and in rightly China. so they're making yeah. money there yeah it's such a huge market and they should ignore it i don't think so no no they're not so that's why you see the statements they're like wait a minute are they saying this and yet yes they are saying one thing and corporations and doing another it's it just business the bottom line is profit so and all most corporations doing that tim cook from apple and, and you name it yeah Kang Day, the president of Lithuania recently said that their anti-China rhetoric was a mistake. Maybe they learned the lesson of not being a dog for someone else against their own interests or not. I, I did hear the statement. As a matter of fact, I read about it yesterday. I had a chance to. Uh, I'm not surprised. You know, those countries uh, uh, realize uh, where are we going with following the Americans in this increased tensions with Russia. Because as I always say, you know, uh, when I did the research on the Russian book, I, I learned a lot. Oh. What I learned is no matter what you hear, any country will have to think twice about either getting in a wagon with the <laughs> Americans or be caught in the middle in a military conflict between Russia and whatever country it is. And Lithuania is realizing that. And by the way, Lithuania is almost exactly next door to Russia. Exactly. Cut me up, right? Yeah. So they are realizing, you know, they're going to be suffering big time, but also they were watching what happened to other countries. <laughs> Australia, <laughs> Australia for, for once. Thank you, YT. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you, YT. Yeah, so that's the usually how countries going to move forward with that. Athene Wu, I agree with you that the crisis on the Ukraine border is for MIC. I don't know what that is. To keep tensions going. Do you think it also has something to do with Nord Stream 2? Can Putin finally get the pipeline approved? Yeah. But, but it goes beyond just the pipeline. It is a geopolitical issue. It is a security issue for Russia. So this is why, you know, I, I'm a believer, and my opinion, Russia will go to a hot war over that. 
It's because uh, strategically, geostrategically, is going to choke Russia if they allow NATO forces to move closer or U.S. established military base. You know. I think you can gauge the seriousness of this by the fact that Putin is requesting conferences with Biden. He, he depends. What, what what do you mean by that, Russ? If, how I'm thinking about this is if Putin wasn't serious saying, look, this is really serious, he wouldn't be. I think he doesn't much respect Biden and he wouldn't be requesting meetings to see if we can resolve this thing. Well, it's because they are. Yeah, yeah the, the, I, I think I see what you mean. Uh, the way Putin is thinking about it is because Putin presented the key point, eight key points that yeah. he did not get the answer to. Yeah, that is the reason why. But he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to because it, the way it's going to work is here. I provided you the key points. You didn't respect. That's my red line. If you cross it, we will react. So now, basically, what Putin was doing is putting the ball in the West's court. That's right. why NATO now is going to embark on a meeting with Russia in January 12th, if I'm not mistaken, to discuss this because they are realizing he is not bluffing. Yeah. So, so just to tie it back to the question, you know, Ukraine, that's why to Russia, it is red line if it ever joined NATO, and they are not going to allow it. I do believe Russia will react militarily. Let's hope not. Oh, yeah. It doesn't get to that. YT. TPLF. Uh, Do you know what that is? I, is losing and the U.S. is imposing sanctions on Ethiopia. What is the latest situation in Ethiopia? Yeah, it is It is a nightmare. Uh, not laughable matter, of course, because anytime you have death and you have, you know, casualty and, and uh, it's a civil war, but also because we in the West do not understand the history of Eth Ethiopia. Yeah. This is not new, by the way, guys. This is not new. That goes back centuries between the main ethnic groups. But now geopolitics play a major role into that because next door you get Sudan and you get you know the Egypt and all this stuff and the presence of China and Russia. Yeah. Remember when we did the video about uh, Russia establishing a naval base in Sudan? You know. Uh, China has already presence, naval presence in Djibouti. Oh, you know? yeah. And, you know, they're moving now with Nigeria and so forth. You can just see the dynamics that's taking place on the African uh, landscape. And, and the U.S. has been left out. <laughs> so well, what the U.S. is going to do is going to, you know, this kind of tensions. But I hope they can resolve that issue. But it looks to me that Ahmed Abi, he's not backing down. And they're going to be moving forward. To so if even if they have to go to Addis Ababa and just take over, so so it's gonna be very complicated. Before the dust settles, yeah. there will be a lot of issues. So so that's where the the tensions in in Ethiopia is. Joe E G, hi David and Ross. Hello. Thoughts thoughts on New Caledonia election for independence from France that was recently held. I'm not aware of this. I heard about it a little bit. I didn't look into it, to be honest, because I, I just did not. France, to me personally, uh, as one who you know, used to spend a lot of time in France, I have family who lives in Paris and so forth. France is gone. France is gone. When I was a kid, you know, France was because the politicians in France right now are completely the opposite, you know, gone the era of Valéry Giscard d'Estaing, gone the era of François Mitterrand, gone the era of, you know, those, those were heavy hitters. Yeah. Heavy hitters that have an understanding of the geopolitical landscape. You know, back then, during at least when I was growing up and Mitterrand was, uh, Fr François Mitterrand was the, the, the president. Yeah. You will never hear François Mitterrand talking about wars and talking about it's always about diplomacy and so forth. So now you know, it's uh, the previous one, Sarkozy, which was involved, by the way, in a corruption with none other than the previous leader of uh, Libya, Gaddafi, the late Gaddafi. Oh, yeah. He, the Gaddafi funneled some money into Sarkozy's campaign. Yes. You know, corruption. You know, the politicians nowadays in France, France is gone. France is gone. So. So I did not know much about this. I'd be happy to take a look at it just to see. Or I just call my family and ask. <laughs> they live there. So, and a report back, of course. 
Patrick X. Uh oh. Kirosh, Kiro, Kishro? Oh, Kishore. Kishore. Kishore oh, oh, Kishore. Okay. Compare. It compares China to a cat becoming a tiger. And stating, yeah. you do not move the same around the room when a tiger is on the bed. Would you agree? Uh, oh. it, it, it's different. You know, Kishore's uh, uh, interpretation or assessments. Uh, yes, I know a lot of people in in uh, uh, Singapore and 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 in 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 Asia. Thanks, you know, he, he has some insights to share, but I don't share his views on everything you know, regarding how he perceives that the the uh, the West uh, the West capability of handling China or containing China. That I do not see. So because uh, I listened to his speech when he came to Harvard, yeah, and and I kind of uh, I got away with you know. A mixed feeling about okay, is the assessment reflects today's reality? So you know he's well respected and so forth, but you know there there, there are a lot of a lot of uh, arguments that I will challenge personally. So 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 these statements, no, I I don't I don't believe that. Rangma. Is there any serious debate in the U.S. about redirecting the MIC towards non-military? What is MIC? Military industrial complex. complex. Yeah. Uh, right. Of course. No worries. Growth-oriented development to compete with China's Belt and Road Initiative. I certainly don't hear it. Yeah, short answer is no. Is no because uh, most Americans and some of us do not even understand uh, the setup in Washington. So, and we're going to be addressing. Because we are Americans, we're going to have to address social issues here at home that we believe Americans need to know. You know, how much the MIC, the control it has on the government oh, yeah. is beyond what, you know, if Americans ever found out, they, they will be just, they will go ballistic to understand how much control they have. And that funneled through lobbyists, that funneled through corruption that we have, political one that is. You know, this is why personally, and this is my personal opinion, if you are to fix this, you start with the fundamentals. Yeah. What is the fundamental, Ross, in my opinion, is to put a term limits on members of Congress. That's to me a common sense. You start with that first. Then we start tackling of, uh, you know, you go to state departments, get rid of the old senior staff there that they've been there for decades, yeah. still thinking the old mindset, you know. You know, uh, there are smart Americans around and they care about the country. We all care about the country, but we are going the wrong directions. It's because MIC's control of the government. Lex Neuron. You're going to have to help me with the guy's name. Lithuania President Nosada. Yeah. Masada. Yeah. Said he was not consulted as to the name of Taiwan representative office in their country. What do you two PhDs think of that? Is he lying? Uh, personally, and I you speak for yourself, Ross, I speak for myself, I, I think he is. You know, if you are a president, you ought to know what's going on. The box stops with you as a president. Right. So when you are saying, oh, I wasn't aware of that, that means you have no clue what's going on in your <laughs> government. You know, of such thing like this magnitude, you know, yeah. of it, you know. You're talking about it because Taiwan, is Taiwan a sovereign state? No, it's not. You know, if we understand under international law what sovereignty is, then you're going to realize, okay, how, how can he allow or not know about a member of his cabinet making a declaration like that? So that that's so my belief, personal, he is lying. Self-protection? Yeah. Okay. World peace. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, world peace. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Think to you China too. be quit a quite quit a beat before O's after Olympic finish. Would you guys China comes to move big I chessboard to transfer geopolitic? I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. Do you get it? Can, can you repeat the can, can you rewrite the question differently? Because it, it's really not clear. So we don't want to answer something that if we don't understand it correctly. So we'll, we'll, we'll get back to that question again. 
village idiot who frequently is very smart stuff. I call say. him village. I don't use okay. that term. <laughs> Your village from now on, village. Uh, to me. <laughs> there have been numerous articles questioning the vitality of U.S. democracy on the eve of January 6th. What will the fall of the U.S. democracy mean for the world diplomatically? We're going to do a big show. Elizabeth and I are going to do mm -hmm. a show on mm -hmm. where the United States stands in terms of uh, comparative democracy among all the all the supposedly democratic oh, nations. That would be interesting. And the United States does not fare very well. Oh. But we're going to do a detailed show on it sometime, probably in January. That would be interesting. Dakian Sun. Hey, Dakian. Hey, Dakian. What do you think about the joint statement of the leaders of the five nuclear weapon states on preventing nuclear war and avoiding uh, avoiding arms races? Uh, uh, those are nothing but a consumption of ink. Uh, I'm, I must tell you this because, you know, as again, I had my time in Washington, D.C., so I was closer to when statements like that are emerging. Uh, you know, you kind of have an understanding yeah. of the background of what it is. It's nothing but a consumption of ink. Because if you are to think of it in that term, that they truly want to move that direction, then how come the NFT, the treaty between the uh, U.S. and Russia, was all of a sudden is gone completely? So if we are to be concerned about this, how come we are pushing for AUKUS to move forward because it's going to pave the way for a nuclear Australia, which Australia always said, we don't want to be in nuclear stuff. But so... To, to me, yeah, here it is again. You yeah. say one thing and you do another. You know, that's that's uh, so I won't I won't put too much stock on that. Hey man. Thank you, hey man. Thank you, hey man. Thoughts on how to profit from a changing world. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, how to to profit from it, it, it depends again. Are you referring a monetary gain? Are you referring intellectual? Are you referring to just developing human relations? Because that can be a profit. Oh, yeah. I mean, can you imagine having a great relationship with other human beings? <laughs> to, to me personally, I, I treasure that. That's why, yeah. you know, you don't get too close with whomever, but the ones you get close to becomes your community. It becomes the ones you... You love, it becomes the one you defend, it becomes the one you care for, it becomes the one you stand with, it becomes, you know, that's the way I look at it. So it depends, you know, are you referring monetary gain? It will always be way of how to make profit, as long as it does not uh, reach at the expense of others. To me, that's always... And quite honestly, we're not economists. Yeah. And we're not investment advisors. Yeah, I'm uh, sure there's ways to make a lot of money out I'm there because sure. a lot of people are doing it. I'm sure. World peace. China wants peace under Olympics, but after that, maybe they would move fast. Uh, it depends again, move fast in what direction, in which sector, because China is moving into different directions from space to semiconductor, to artificial intelligence, to uh, biotechnology, to even green energy. So oh, yeah. they, are they going to move fast? Yes, they are. You know, what, what? that's what you will expect. Because once again, here is where I find history. I always use history as my guide. Yeah. I'll go back to after World War II, when the U.S. emerged. Yeah. What did we do after that? We moved fast. And the other, the other side of that is, historically, China has patience. And what they have is the ability to push in the direction they want to go, knowing that they'll eventually get yeah. there. I think I just had a chance to look at uh, President Xi's uh, five-year plan. Yeah, yeah they, they, they think ahead. They think ahead. So for us, our system is different because we think in terms of next quarter. Yeah. And, and that, that's enough. So are they going to move fast? Yes. They're going to move fast because they need to achieve, but not fast to the point of becoming clumsy. They're not going to do that. They're going to move fast according to if they if they reach the level where they need in this phase, they're going to move to the next phase. Yeah. That's the way I see it moving. Dennis Hugh de Ocampo. Mm -hmm. Is the conflict between Presidents Biden and Elon Musk is because of 
the awarding of the project to develop the EUV to the weapon builders. I am not aware too much of this. What I am aware of, uh, it's the uh, uh, Elon Musk's possession on the infrastructure bill. <laughs> mm. He's like, you know, forget about all that. You know, I can see his point because, you know, the government spends money. This is for our American audience. The government spent your tax money on things that have nothing to do with your welfare. Right. So Elon Musk's argument was from a business perspective. So in other words, are you want to let the government decide on a business or you let the businesses run their own? Because businesses are much better at seeing where the problems are and what the needs are versus the government. Government is a bureaucracy. We all know that. Yeah. So. Also, if you even do a superficial dive into the contents of this of this bill, what you find is it's largely a waste of money. It has nothing to do with really uh, really reconstructing the infrastructure of the United States. Exactly. And the second part to that question as to the money being diverted to the uh, weapons manufacturer, the answer is yes. <laughs> Once again, it goes back to the previous question of the MIG, the military industrial complex, controlling. Yeah. You know, this is why most Americans do not know that the budget of the Department of Defense is not structured by the government. It's structured by the military industrial complex. Boone, okay, Boone. Hey, Boone. Thank you. <laughs> Is the Build Back Better still on track to pass? Uh, no, I suspect it's not, dead. No, there's a lot of that. I don't see that. There's a lot of fighting behind the scenes in Congress. And this is where the lobbyist comes in. And, and uh, so I don't see that moving forward as of now. No. Because also the Democrats are very concerned about midterm. As yeah. they should be. Yeah, they're gonna. They're think, looking to take a bloodbath here. Yeah. El. Recently, the major nuclear power nations signed a treaty to only use nuclear weapons for self-defense only, but it seems like it doesn't really accomplish since nukes could still be available or would still be available. Yeah. Yeah, that that's that's been also. It's almost like the idea of the the mad. The mutual assured destruction treaty that was signed to certain countries. Yeah, they, they are, you know, within those treaties of, of no first use. Yeah. You know? uh, but at the same time, what do you think a country will do if, if that country that is a nuclear power but is cornered? So, I hate to think what they would yeah, do. Yeah. So it's hard to tell because when you are put in the reality, uh, you don't know how. This is why, for example, in my personal opinion, uh, I always get concerned about if you we corner Russians, what the yeah. Russians could do. We don't know. We just never know. So, so yes, they are saying, uh, well, we are not going to use this, but you just never know. No. And let's hope they never get yeah. to that. T-Man. Considering the, the U.S. debt, can the U.S. build infrastructure to compete with what China is doing in some regions? No. No, it's resounding no. It's because we don't have the strategy. This is not about just money. Our problem in America, and I'll say it, I hope some politician in Washington is watching this. Our problem in America is we threw money at every issue, thinking that money can solve everything. That's our one of the our problems. And second thing, we don't think in terms, we fixing things just to fix. We don't build for the long term. So we can't compete with that. You know. Also, the money just isn't really available the way it is in China, or yeah. at least the way it has been in China. Well, because look where we put money. We put yeah. them in defense. Right. Why am I? Why will we allocate seven hundred sixty billion dollars to defense? Why? Why? You know? We do know why. Yeah. Because there's some greedy people who are going to make a fortune. Yeah. And but it doesn't have benefit us. Exactly, and that's where part of the issue is. So they can compete because it would have been make more sense to cooperate with China or any other country that has that kind of infrastructure and say, hey, we'd like to build some infrastructure. I still wonder why aren't we able to have speed trains from New York to LA? But lobbyists is not going to allow it. So, oh Boy, that's a lot to say about that. But that's oh, we're going to be addressing that. Journey to the East. Yeah, yeah, it's good to see you, Journey. RCEP already stated, mm -hmm. and what is your thought on Australia and Japanese role 
in this free trade zone? Well, it's not going to be as influential as you may think, because when you consider RCEP, uh, you know, just China by itself with its economy, you you take that and you take the ASEAN. Yeah. Just just you know just just to consider that for a moment, and you say whatever J uh, Japan and, and and Australia are saying, those are nothing but just to support the narrative of the West. It's not going to amount to anything. It's because, you know, Japan, well, can we, do we talk about Japan's economy anymore? Not really. No, after the 80s from last century, they were gone. And can we talk about Australia's economy today? No, we <laughs> know how, you know, the government is lying in Australia, that is. And that was what, when we had the conversation with, with Robbie. Robbie. Yeah. So what you hear coming out of Western media uh, it's you know Western or even in Japan. Uh, I, I read a statement by the uh, Minister of Defense of, of Japan regarding Taiwan and all. And that's like, what is he talking about? You know, it just uh, and I could tell he's been pushed to say that narrative. So yeah, it won't amount to anything because you know you got the Chinese economy, you know, and you got the ASEAN. Yeah, no, that those just between the two, they can dominate whatever they need to. Dominate. Well, they are dominating, they are indeed. Yeah, oh, Otto, Orto, no, Otro, I'll get it right. <laughs> Liber Pensador, what is your opinion on the European Union Foreign Affairs Commission? Uh, Commissioner, I guess, Joseph Borrell, a well known Russian hater, visiting. The Donbass front line for three days. days. Yeah, and I remember the, his statements about Taiwan when he went to Taiwan. Yes, he is, and 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 Braille is, is also some statements he mentioned before. It, it's ridiculous because that tells you right there the European Union has no foreign, not just European Union, but the West at large. Uh, the foreign policy is so fragmented. Yeah. There is no strategy. There is no vision. You know, I remember in one of my arguments that I stated that, you know, dealing with Russia in this case, for example, requires a strategy. But we do have a drain of brains that they understand Russia in Washington. You got a hoax that decides on those policies. Yeah. You know, and, and that's personally why I left. I got tired of, you know, nonsense in Washington. <laughs> and it's unfortunate. There are some smart people around that truly have an understanding. You take, for example, uh, just to uh, give a comparison uh, on China with uh, uh, Dr. Hammond. Oh, yeah. You know, why Dr. Hammond not be the one advising the American president about the issue? The guy has an understanding of, of the history and using that knowledge to structure a policy. You know, but Washington doesn't like that. Washington wants the people who can lie. Washington wants the, the sleazy individuals that can, you know, that's, to me, that's that's... Uh, what the EU or this Burrell uh, guy is saying is a reflection of that fragmentation of the foreign policy. And second thing, before I forget, the EU has no teeth anyway. <laughs> the EU needs to grow up and stand on its feet, but they couldn't. Because we have to watch them all the time. Journey, Journey to, the to the East. East. Thank you, Journey. Thank you, Journey. Yes, but my question is Australia and Japan is part of RCEP. Mm -hmm. And my thought is Australia might use this RCEP as a backdoor to re-engage with China. Possibly, but it's unlikely. Remember, one thing about Australia, and I'll say it straightforward. Uh, uh, maybe some Aussies are watching this. The decisions regarding Australia are not made in Canberra. They are made in Washington, D.C. So you can interpret that any way you want. And you know what I'm referring to here. So that is what I'm saying. If Australia has good intentions of reestablishing relations with China, they will go directly yeah. to China, request a visit to Beijing. You know, I am sure the Chinese government will open the door for them. Well, they gave them the, here the 10 ways that you can do business. Here are the 10 demands that you have to fulfill yeah. if you're going to do business with us. They couldn't have been more clear. And as we read them, they were reasonable. Yeah. 
and yet Australia couldn't follow through that. So it becomes a question of the intentions. Does Australia have true good intentions to re-engage with China? Because I believe, and this is my personal opinion, if they would have embarked on this step, China could change its position regarding Australia. But Australia will not be able to do that because the master, the U.S., says no. You know, one thing about the Chinese is they're infinitely pragmatic. Mm -hmm. And they say, let's do good business together. You comply with their rules, they're probably going to open the door the next day. Yeah, but I just don't see them doing that. Uh, can they use that uh, RCEP behind? Yes, but it won't go far. Because remember, they're going to have to be in public to display that truly they mean re-engaging China. And I don't see uh, Morrison's government has the gut to do that. Because <laughs> the guy's been lying the entire time. Or the wisdom. Yeah. Okay. I want to answer a question from our Rumble. Okay. okay. Let's answer. We're going to answer one question from a Rumble here uh, because one of our uh, okay. video, uh, subscriber in a Rumble sent the question. So we're going to answer that one. We do have a Rumble guy. By the way, guys, you need to check it out. Question. Do y'all believe there's any hope of saving the Western political system from sliding into a total oligarchy? Given how we're seeing more politicians aligning against the uh, the wishes. Right yeah. yeah. That's an, if I may answer that one, Ross. We're both going to answer it. If you, go ahead. Go ahead, Ross. Well, we have we don't have a democracy right now. We have a plutocracy. That is the 1% of the powerful and the rich, obscenely rich, really dictate a whole lot of what's going on right now. And we're hoping that that's going to change, but we say it's a hope. Okay, uh, the answer that I'm going to give you based on your question, you're talking about the Western system. So you're talking about the entire system in the West as it's been sort of embarked on from century or two centuries, whatever that might be. So mainly after the French revolutions. So if we are to think about managing or saving the Western system that you and I understand, uh, yes, it can be done. But it's going to require a lot of work. And the work that is required is to change the foundation of what the system was based on. And that's not an easy task because it ends up being who controls the process because who controls the process controls the outcome. So, you know, we can say, for example, what's wrong with democracy? Well, democracy is messy, inherently <laughs> messy. But... If you are to say we are using democracy, but not giving the voice to the people, what good is that democracy is going to do you? You know, Aristotle warned about it 2000 years ago. It was for a reason. So if we are to save the Western democracy or the Western system that you are referring to, you're going to have to change the foundation of the entire system because what works today is not compatible with what it was a hundred years ago. So, and I again, I don't see the those who control the process willing to allow that to happen. But the possibility is there. Okay, last question. Last question. Lori Sito. Who owns the trajectories of Earth's outer areas? Governments or commercial interests? What if they intrude on the national interests of other countries without approval? Oh, that's a hot question. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's an interesting one. Well, if we are talking about trajectories in space, or yeah, yeah, it's it's nobody, and that's this is why I always say that could become a geopolitical conflict or tensions that goes from Earth to space. As of today, there are no boundaries in space. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't it be anyway? An open invitation for a conflict sometime in the future. Yeah, but you will think when it make more sense for us to cooperate, all of us, humanity, to cooperate, human humankind, to cooperate to allow us to live in peace, all of us. I used to do this joke with people, mm -hmm. and the joke is, you're committing a sin. The sin is you're being reasonable. Oh. I'm going, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely correct. So. And and they always got it. Yeah, reason doesn't seem to make a lot of difference. Yeah. And this is where we see in those the escalations of tensions. And yes, they could 
move up to space will become another dimension where those conflicts is gonna erupt and let's hope it does not so because we want a peaceful world for everybody because as i always say we're just passing through here well i know I, I just don't get it i don't get it when people get still wrapped up into we're just passing through so let's hope it will be peaceful for everybody well uh we want to thank you for your interesting questions your engagements it's always a pleasure i find it a pleasure engaging with you because that just stimulates my thinking and all that stuff so uh also remember to we're gonna be doing some live break-ins this afternoon and tomorrow remember to check this out and also remember to watch the or check out the video we're gonna release tomorrow uh, with greg foss uh, i can recommend highly enough to watch that in its entirely very very insightful and we're gonna be doing a live stream on friday you know and for our members tomorrow would, there's a q a for members only. that's all for uh, that's yeah for our members that's for the membership we're gonna do the q a for them because we do the same for our members because we can talk openly shall we say right you, know, you all know about this i don't need to beat the dead horse here and i'm sure you've here you heard what's going on with you know censorship and so forth so uh you know anything to add russ thank you for viewing yeah we um, really enjoy seeing you yeah and remember to check us out on locals uh, at geopolitics.locals.com and also remember to check our membership at geopoliticsinconflict.com so and as always guys stay informed 10